Okay, so it's trip number two. We're heading out to officially get the filter system, the chiller, the UV sterilizer running, water between the filter and the, um, uh, the tank itself. Now, there's one special thing that I do need to make mention, and that is I got married this last weekend. I've now got an aquarium wife. Yeah, wishful thinking. Meet You're her. So Meet yeah. her. <laughs> nag, 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 nag. Okay, so we're at the location on trip number two. The goal is to uh, get the filter system running. Um, Scott is in the process of trying to come up with some slick solution for uh, getting water into the UV sterilizer as well as into the chiller. Um, this will be the sump with the Micron socks. What I think I'm gonna start doing is getting the pipe run from down there through the hole here and connect to that with a union fitting in there. Uh, so we can start moving forward here. So part of the filter cabinet is to have some ventilation. In this case, we'll call it positive ventilation. So we're installing two little um, computer or muffin fans that will actually suck air into the cabinet and discharge it out the back side. These ones actually push out the back and they'll draw air in from holes down below. There are screened inlets down at the bottom there. And then Scott's still trying to figure out the uh, UV and the chiller plumbing hookup. So I stand corrected. He did figure out where to put the UV. And it was not over by the chiller. It will now be on the back side of the reservoir or sump. So it's mounted vertically. There's a couple of clamps there that'll hold it in position and that should make it easy to uh, replace the bulb when needed. My job for the moment is to get the holes drilled into the acrylic sump. Once I've got the holes drilled and the various bulkheads positioned and tightened, we can then lift the sump up and place it into its wooden filter box. So my aquarium wife allowed me to uh, do some of the plumbing. So here's the line that comes from the tank, subterranean, out into the box, passing through the edge into a union ball valve into the top of the wet dry or the uh, sump. Uh, that'll bring the water in and then over here he's got most of the plumbing done on the water pump itself um, and then you can see there that's the line that'll return back via subterranean back to the tank and then we've got the UV sterilizer position here with soft tubing into a, a manifold and there also happens to be a uh, another gate valve that'll have soft tubing that'll send water to the chiller unit, which is currently having its fittings put in there. So, so we're coming down to the final few fittings. Again, this is the inlet side, where will the water be coming from the tank via that pipe back there, into this little uh, manifold that's going to drop it into a, a kind of a really, pre-filter really chamber. Short piece, Jim. It is, but that's the one that should be going between the 45s. It is. Okay, so we are uh, just about ready to start pouring water into the uh, sump. Um, I guess he's not going to hook up the liter meter until he's ready to do the um, uh, apex controller. Put the chillers in. There is a cover that goes over the chiller, but he doesn't have that in yet. So we're uh, apparently not running the chiller tonight. And uh, there's all the return pipes for the return pump inside there. And I've 
got filter socks. Um, and as uh, you can see, the re, uh, RO water replacement jugs down here, and we're going to order a, a custom uh, reservoir. So with all of the plumbing connections secured and double checked, I can now begin to add water into the sump. And then shortly, we can turn on the main water pump and send that water into the cylinder tank inside the house. Are you ready for the coolest jellyfish system ever? It's not a bowl and it's not a box. It's a circulation device and it allows you to build your own individual customized jellyfish aquarium system. This new circulation device allows you to convert almost anyone's equally sided tank into a jellyfish system. Introducing a uniquely innovative concept from the originator of the home hobbyist jellyfish system, the Jellyquarium 360. Jim Stein, the pioneer of jellyfish tanks, now offers the Jellyquarium 360. Why 360? Because it's designed for a tank you can walk around or view from all sides. The 360 fits into the top of a hexagon, a cube, or a cylinder tank. It produces a three-dimensional water flow that gently rotates jellyfish in a geometric 3D circular donut-shaped flow pattern. The new Jellyquarium 360 was designed using 3D software and is state-of-the-art 3D printed. And best of all, it's proudly made in America. Four sizes are available, plus an entire line of standard acrylic aquariums, stands and canopies, ranging from hexagon to cubes to the awesome looking cylinders. Welcome to the newest in jellyfish keeping, meet the next challenge. Visit jellyquarium360.com for more information. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's MyFishTank.com. When you think of Tunzi products, you probably think of protein skimmers, internal pumps, and submersible filters. But did you know? Tunzi also offers water level controllers, reverse osmosis water purification systems, pH, temperature, and ORP instrumentation? Are you aware of Tunzi's full line of various filter medias and LED lighting? Have you seen Tunzi's updated line of Turbell pumps, the Nano Stream, the Stream, and the Master Stream, along with their controllers? In addition to their wide product line, what Tunzi in Germany wants you to also see is their technology, their quality, their craftsmanship, and in particular, their people and the pride that goes into every one of their products and its assembly. Tunzi, high-tech aquarium ecology. And with the sump filled with salt water, it's now time to open the valves and turn on the water pump. Ready? I'm gonna open the valves into the tank. Let me just double check. All right, so you've got uh, the main valves open that are letting water at least from the tank into the filter and the filter back towards the tank and I would think what we're looking for is to see if there's any water running on the uh, cabinet floor. Alright, so far no floods or spills. Alright, it's time to open the valve and turn on the pump. Cross your fingers. So that should start allowing water. There it goes in the internal overflow and the return pipes will back siphon. So we're now getting water from the tank into the first 
main chambers. I think we drained the internal overflow is what we did. So then the next step will be is to uh, turn the main pump on and it'll start drying water out of this reservoir and it'll actually send it back to the tank. Alright, so the water's going into the tank from the filter via the pump. Fill up the tank and it'll start going through the overflow. Tank's filling up. Put the water in. The whole thing's starting up. And draining from the tank into the socks. Chiller, water passing through the chiller, returns, water passing through the UV sterilizer, and it returns. Where's the sterilizer? The white unit. Okay. Nothing's leaking. Don't see any water on the cabinet floor. How's the air feel as far as circulation? Well, I put these two fans in there, so it's as good as it's going to get. We have some extra holes down at the bottom. We get some air in there as well. So the filter system's been running for a little bit. The socks are starting to pull out the sediment out of the tank. We've got the lids on there. We've got the... Uh, the lids are cut out to accommodate the ATB protein skimmer. Uh, that'll probably come next week when we come to uh, install the Apex Aquarium system. Here is the cover for the chiller. It's got a couple of handles on there, so that's nicey nice. Um, vents on the front side, and there's a vent on the back side, so it's a positive airflow. Again, that's the main line. Um, the water pump is a uh, Fluval SP series. Uh, SP6, I believe. I think Scott said it's about 3,000 gallons an hour. Granted, there's a, a bit of a distance between here and the tank that's inside the house, so the flow is a little bit slower. But um, anyhow, that uh, Fluval SP6 generates uh, X amount of flow. Some of it goes to the chiller, some of it goes to the UV unit. That all gets returned into the sump, and then the balance of the flow uh, gets uh, sent there, passes through the ground, rises up underneath the tank, through the underside of the tank, uh, up through the overflow, and then you can see the returns right there. Um, got about a two inch gap um, between the inside top of the tank and the water surface, and that's pretty much due to um, a pretty healthy uh, set of uh, teeth or slots there. The overflow you can see has the uh, Durzo uh, in there, and there's the uh, two elbows for the return pipes and the uh, surface agitation. Uh, at the moment, the lighting on the tank is nothing more than a simple um, uh, small little power compact bulbs, but uh, in two weeks, I think, once they get the canopy and the uh, cabinetry, uh, we can come back and install the uh, LED strip lights inside the tank. With the filter system now running, the Micron socks will remove the remaining sediment that's still in the tank. And with the small power compact lighting sitting on top of the tank's lid, you can see just how spectacular Condi's Live Rock sculpture actually looks inside the tank. Join us for part six as we realize we've still got a small problem with the drain line and Scott begins to install a very complex Apex Aquarium Controller System.